Hello uh, students, this is Mr Sutton here and I'm going to do an introduction today into a process that is called crating. Now drawing in crating is similar to some things you may have already done which is where you have drawn in 3D using a ruler and maybe a tri-square or a set square maybe even a projector or some grid paper. All of these ones have kind of lines or something to guide you. This is just going to be plain paper and a pencil. This is just a plain old pencil, nothing spectacular, HB, anything that's lying around. Plain paper, I've got A3 here, but A4 is fine. Um, but as long as it's some sort of plain paper, it could even be coloured if necessary. But key thing we're looking for is maybe adding some colour later on, so it might be better with white. The one thing I don't want to see you use is a ruler. It's an absolute no-no. No rulers, please, whatsoever on this. I want it to purely be freehand. And it's really important to be able to draw in three dimensions when you are doing 3D sketches. As a designer, to convey and explain your ideas, being able to draw in three dimensions is absolutely crucial. So this technique, don't expect to be perfect at it straight away. It does take practice, but nevertheless, if you do it correctly, you should be able to figure most of these out. So, what are we going to do first of all? Well, the first thing I'm going to ask you to do is I'm going to turn the piece of paper and I'm going to ask you to do a kind of Y shape. And we start that off in the middle of your piece of paper with a line that just goes straight up. Notice I've turned the paper so that my hand allows it to move freely like this. It is hard to draw straight up like this. No matter what anybody says on YouTube, it's hard. So give yourself a break. Don't make things more difficult for yourself, especially when you're starting out, make it easier. And in the same way, I'm going to tilt it slightly and I'm going to have an angle taken up here and that's going to be the start of my Y. Now, if I think about, if I use two pencils here, it's approximately a 45 degree angle. Approximately a 45 degree angle is what we're looking at. And I'm doing so in construction lines. So when I say construction lines, those are lines that are easy for me to rub out if needed. I've made them a little bit darker than I would do normally so that the camera can pick them up and you can see them. But you need to do them so you can see them just, you know, dark enough so you can see it. And that means you can go over them and rub them out. Or, in fact, like a lot of designers do, you don't even need to do that. You can just leave them on there and it just makes it so much better. So I've got this that has got that line and that going off. So I'm going to turn it round and I'm going to do another line coming back and it's approximately from that same point at 45 degrees. So what I've now got is I've got the top corner of a cube. You might be able to see that in your mind's eye there that we've got this top corner of the cube. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to have some lines that are going to be coming out in this direction. Now to give you an idea, I often use the pencil this just helps you to visualize what is going on because no mark on the paper, but you can see the line. So it's often a good idea to try and get an idea of this so you don't have to rub it out, you don't make the mistakes. Look, think, take your time. And this is the angle that I want it. It's gonna be parallel. Remember, parallel lines, they don't converge, don't get closer together, and they don't diverge. I want it to be parallel. So I'm going to turn it slightly so I've got a little bit more space on here. And I'm going to do my line. And I've done quite a long line there. It doesn't matter because it can be easily rubbed out. And I'm going to do the same on the other side. So I'm going to turn my piece of paper so it makes it easier. That is the position I had previously. And then I'm just going to have a line coming back from there. Like so. Now if we look at that, we have got are kind of edges. We've got an edge here, an edge here of our cube. We need to probably decide how big we want to make our cube. And that's a vertical line, top to bottom, that we're going to put over here. So I'm going to turn it round. Again, parallel. Parallel. If you're having problems figuring it out, and I'll do this one down here, you can figure it out. I'm going to do it about there. Again, I'm going to use a pencil and go like that. Don't want to use that. There we go. So I've got the two edges. I've got two sides now to my cube. What I need to do is the top. 
And the top should be fairly straightforward. You have to follow the same rules about parallel, parallel, parallel. And it's parallel to here. So I'm going to have something that comes like that. And if I take another pencil, you can imagine another one like that. Now, the problem I've got is it does go slightly off the top. But it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. Because we can work into this and change this. So I'm going to do parallel line, parallel, and it pops off the edge of the paper. Then here, coming back again, turning it round so it makes it nice and easy. And actually, I can make that work so it's just, just on that piece of paper. You might have a little bit of a problem getting it to work perfectly. Again, it doesn't matter. You can always change this later on. Now, let's take a look at what we've produced. We've managed to produce, and it only just fits in the frame, we've got a rectangle, a kind of cube, cuboid shape, with two faces and a top. We've got these lines, bits coming off here we don't need, and we could go over and darken it up and then shade this in. But let's have a look at adding to this, what we can do to add more features to it, because that, after all, is the skill that we want to build. Now, the great thing about these is we can start to chop out things. What I'm going to do is I'm going to try on the top piece just here, and I'm just going to go, and I'm going to go a parallel line just there, and a parallel line just here, turn it, and I'm doing like a, a hatch bit, if you like, in the top. So there's a rectangle. So all of those, I've got the same kind of distance all the way around. Again, I'm not perfect, not measured. Doesn't need to be. It's a sketch. That's what creating is all about. Now, I want to make this look as though it's sunk down into the shape. And all I have to do is remember the rules, that if it's vertical, it goes vertical. So I can do a vertical line off here. Parallel to this one here, coming down. Now, I'm not going to go all the way down because I'm not going to go all the way into the shape. I'm going to come down the depth that I want it. At this point here, I'm going to do this face on the inside. And I'm going to see this line here. And again, I'm going to do a line that's parallel. Can you see? Turn the piece of paper. And again, this is where the pencil can help you. If you're not quite sure what you're doing, we're looking at a parallel line that's going to go back. And it's going to go back that way. Now, if I look at that, I've got a shape now that looks like it's disappearing into it. It's going into the shape. I can start to darken my lines if I wanted to, to make it a bit easier for everybody to see, a bit clearer to see, like that. And I can do again there and there. So you can see that I've got a shape now that has a, an indentation into it. The same kind of rules would apply if I wanted to start, have something that was coming out of it. So if I was going to have something that came out this side, like an extension, if you like, or if I wanted to add bits on here, I'd just use the same kind of decision. So I'm going to just add an extra bit. I'm going to come from this point and then parallel here, I'm just going to continue a line like that. So you can see this is like the extension onto our block. I need to come down, and of course that is in parallel with this one. So take the piece of paper all the way around so it makes it nice and easy for me. Parallel. Let's have a look. So we've got the face now here. If I rub this piece out, it would be like a step. Now this bit going back over to here is obviously going to be parallel with this line here. Now this is the tricky bit. This line, we need to have like another edge on here somewhere, but whereabouts do I put it? I haven't got a point of reference just here. So what I can do is I can measure from there to there and there to there to get it correct. Now, I said no rulers, so we're gonna do it in a different way. I'm going to turn it round a bit so we can see it. And I'm going to place a pencil just like that onto it. And then I'm taking the pencil where that point is. I put it against, and that's my mark. Remember, we are doing everything in a kind of approximation. It doesn't need to be perfect. The human eye doesn't need it to be to be convinced. And then this line is obviously parallel to that one. 
And you can see now that I have a convincing step. I need to make this a bit darker just here as well. And I would think about maybe uh, just a little bit there and then. And I might just make a bit of a corner there. And then I can darken it up and have it come back the other way as well. And obviously at the bottom, I would need to have a more convincing line along here. Curves. I'm going to show you a curve. One of the reasons why I didn't go all the way along here. I'm going to do a curve that's just here. Now, curves are tricky. This really is an advanced one. I'm going to almost make like a curve, like a bit of one of those old style bricks. The idea of a curve is if I imagined, well, notice I'm doing it in very faintly, a rectangular hole that would be cut through here. What I'm going to do is use that, think about where the middle point is, and I do a curve like that. See how I come up to the middle point and then come down to the end point. Now that puts my curve in. And of course, the bit that goes back is parallel to these lines because it's going that way. It's going all these lines. So I'm just going to go like that and it disappears into my bridge brick type of building thing. Now you can see here that this, we can start to go over it, add more detail to it. Increase the darkness of our lines. And then, of course, we can add in details. So I could decide to turn this into a building. So this could be a building. I could go, right, okay, I'm going to have this top edge here. And I could start thinking about putting in some windows. So if I wanted a window, maybe it's a window just here, parallel, parallel, parallel again. And parallel a window on the side do another one on the other side this time I'm gonna have it so that it comes a little bit longer parallel this way notice I'm doing the top and the bottom first parallel and parallel so we've got two different windows on our building here I could get it depth as well so I could do a little bit in and Parallel until it disappears. And parallel until it disappears. And the same for the other side. So again, a little bit of a bit going. Notice even that small line is going in the same direction. Parallel. And parallel. And we can start to make our not an unusual building, obviously particularly poor because uh, it has no roof. So uh, we'd <laughs> whoever lives in this upstairs flat here above this lovely curve just here, it's going to get very, very wet. Unless, of course, that was glass. And you notice I just put that little squiggle of a line that looks like it's resting on the surface. And it kind of gives the impression that that could be a glass window that's on the top. I don't know why, why you want to live in a house with a glass ceiling. Now, of course, at that point, you can start to think about it, adding in any of your colors. And I've got different ones here and bring these to life. Now, I'm not going to do a video on actually how to add color. That's going to be for another time. But by all means, have a look, see what you can do. And I look forward to seeing your, some of your submissions and some of the bits and pieces you come up with. Let the imagination run wild. But remember, the key thing is it's parallel lines at all points. Okay, then. Good luck and hope to see you soon. Take care. Goodbye.